Hey gun people! Uh, this is some tactics issues here and uh, the big bad traffic stop. This cop, uh, you know, his kids get to grow up because he's dead and his big story is, well, I was stopping a guy for speed, you know, I was going to give him a ticket and raise his insurance and uh, get my stat for the day doing my police service collecting taxes. So, uh, Anyway, this 22-year-old cop stops this guy for speeding, and uh, it goes downhill pretty quick here. This guy's been put to death. The guy, the cop dies, and the uh, shooter here has... Come on, step back here with me. Come on back here for me. Come on back. How you doing today? Come on back here and keep your hands out of your pocket. Keep your hands out of your pocket, sir. Fuck sir. You, God damn it. Here I am. Shoot my fucking ass. Come here. Okay, that's a clue. Dude starts dancing, saying, shoot my ass. You might want to. You can tell this guy's reaching for his gun. Um, it, it's hard to tell, but his arm is going back f for the gun. The problem is uh, evidently this, this cop was reprimanded a few weeks before for pulling his gun too fast. So they're saying because he was slow to pull his gun and return fire is why he got killed. Uh, it could be that, could be tactics, could be a lot of things. I mean, sometimes it's just your time. Okay, the problem with a lot of people be like, why didn't he have him at gunpoint? Well, I would have probably pulled my gun out, but I think I would have put it back in. When a guy starts charging you here, you can't really shoot him for running at you. He's unarmed. So if you have your gun out, now you lose that hand to defend yourself, to uh, punch, to grab, to poke. So, you know, you have to put your gun back in your holster to re-secure it. So a lot of times that's a deciding factor in cops' mind on when I pull my gun, will I have to put it back? What happens if I just end up in a fight? I mean, when you start pulling a gun, you want to have enough distance that if it goes just physical without a weapon, that you can get your gun back in your holster and get in a fight. Uh, you don't really don't want to be fighting with a gun in your hand. Then you get an accidental discharge. Then you hit the guy with the gun. Then your magazine may come out. Then you may disable your gun. You can't use it. Then if the suspect pulls a gun, your gun's disabled. So when you pull your gun out, you want to either be able to use it, keep distance, or at least keep it in an operable position. So that, those are some factors that go to an officer's head when they're pulling their gun, when to pull it, when to put it back in, etc. Get that. Where are you? Okay, so right now you can't see this, but the officer pulls his baton and defends this guy off with a baton. So he uses force. The guy's attacked him. The guy's failure to cooperate. He's a no person. And he lets the guy go back to his car. Sir, get back. Now, get back. Get back. Sir, get back now. No. Get back. Fuck you. Sir, get back. No, no, no. Get back, sir. Sir, get back. I'm more worried about the dog and this whole incident than either one of these knuckleheads. But anyway, I know all the cops will be out there. How can you say that about a brother? Look, I, people are out there writing tickets. I, I, I just, I got no pity for them. I'm so tired of cops harassing decent people over bullshit when there's enough crime out there. I am a Okay, so now he's assaulting the guy. The guy's assaulting him. He said, fuck you. He's got on the road. He's acting irrational. He's saying, shoot me. Now, he said, he's, I'm a Vietnam uh, veteran, combat veteran. Uh, this guy, the old guy, the, 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 the guy in the white truck, not the cop, he was a lieutenant in uh, the 82nd, did some time in Vietnam, was diagnosed with PTSD, and was given 100% disability. Uh, so the guy's got issues. Had a divorce when he came back from the war, got PTSD. They just said, ah, he's, you're 100% disabled and threw a little bit of money at him. So now he's got a little pension. And, you know, he went from being a lieutenant uh, in the military, probably controlling a lot of people, saving people's life, watching. I guess he watched two of his commanders get killed, got blown up in front of him. He's had to take over command. Uh, so he, he's seen a lot of things and, you know, it, it changed who he was. But, you know, when you reach somebody like this that, that looks like they have nothing to lose, 
Those who have nothing to lose, you know, they're problems. And this guy is at a low point. Now, you don't know all this, but there's a lot of clues here that this guy is not firing with all cylinders. 1078, Okay. So this officer kind of goes when I go into panic mode. He, he's, he was caught so off guard and so flat-footed because he was just planning on pulling a guy over, writing him a ticket, selling a ticket, and going on about his day because he collected his taxes and got his stat. And when it didn't go that way, he wasn't mentally prepared. He didn't have a plan. Remember, be nice to everybody, but always have a plan to kill him. This guy was really thrown off guard, and, and it kind of threw his game plan off. And I don't think the cop ever really regained control of the situation. Now, the cop was only, I think, 22 years old. So he's a young cop. But still, uh, you know, there's a lot of issue here. Could he shoot him for going in his car? No. Could he have increased the distance? He did increase distance. Should he have decreased it? I mean, should he follow the guy back to the car? Do I want to let a guy get back in a car with a weapon and come out with a weapon? Those are all decisions you got to make. I mean, some people will say, no, he did the right thing. He kept distance and he used the car for protection. Well, he died. Uh, had he followed the guy and said, don't go in that freaking car, grabbed him by the neck, threw him on the ground, and started beating his ass, maybe he wouldn't have got back to the car. Maybe he wouldn't have got that gun out, and maybe neither one of them would be dead. But he made a choice, and, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Sir, get back now! You hear the other units saying, what's your exact location? You know, you guys get out here on these traffic stops, they don't call in a location. This shit goes bad. He just got on the radio and said, I need help. And now nobody knows where he's at. Okay, so the radio's asking him questions. The suspect's yelling at him. He's yelling back at the suspect. And now the cops are like, why ain't he answering the radio? And, you know, why? Because there's a lot going on. Get the vehicle. Get the gun down. Okay, put the gun down. At this point, I might be shooting. This guy's already demonstrated. He said, kill me. He's a danger to others. He's jumping out on the road. And now he's arming himself. I, I think deadly force is authorized. The cop was probably thinking, shit, I just got to let a reprimand for pulling my gun too quick. I don't want to shoot this guy unless I have to, so I'm going to wait. All this racial bullshit, dealing with a poor black man, uh, harassment, you're a racist, you're too much force, those cause delay in thought process and in action in cops, and that's how cops get killed. Well, I got me out the gun, I need help. Put the gun down. See, he just said, I need help again, instead of putting out his exact location. Nobody knows where he's at, but he missed all that. He doesn't understand that because his mind's going a mile a second, and he's, he's hyperventilating. You can hear his voice. You can hear the stress in his voice. He's screaming. He's getting tunnel vision. Uh, he's not thinking clearly. He's getting auditory exclusion because he's focusing on a suspect. So he may not even hear the radio asking for his location. He's just trying to get on the radio. I need help. Now he's got a gun. Now I need help more because he's got a gun, and they still don't know where he's at. <clears throat> at a minimum, with a guy with a gun, I'm at least ready to shoot if that gun comes out. Maybe not shoot yet. I mean, I, I think he's okay for shooting legally, but morally and policy-wise, he's worried about it. But at least I'm having a gun that if that gun comes out, I can get first round off on target and get a couple of rounds on target if that gun swings my way. And I don't think the cop was doing that. I think he was kind of panicking, moving back. Again, I'm guessing. I'm thinking he's moving behind the cover. He's going forward. He's talking on the radio. He's kind of panicking. He doesn't really have a good plan that I'm going to kill this guy if he pulls that gun out because he's worried about other things. Okay, so now they start exchanging shots, and uh, I think the suspect fires first, because the officer was so much in his mind about policy, he was like, shit, I'm not shooting unless this guy shoots, the gun may be unloaded, it may be blank, it may not be a real gun, I, I, I don't want to get in more trouble. So he waited for the guy to shoot first. The guy shot first, 
and the officer empties his gun and never hits the guy and has to reload. Okay, so now he, he realizes, again, this guy was in combat. He knows he's doing good tactics here. He knows this guy is reloading. He doesn't shot his load, and now he's got to reload. So now i got time to move. And the guy took advantage of that opportunity on the reload and said, I'm going to increase distance, or I'm going to uh, uh, go, move in on the guy and uh, try to get closer so I can take this guy out. And, I mean, good tactics on the uh, combat vet. He stayed behind cover, waited till the guy's out of ammunition, and now he's moving in. And he's, I think, armed with an M1 carbon. I'll put a link to the, uh, tells the whole story on Wikipedia, and I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> Guy's really aggressive. I like his aggressive shooting stance. He gets down, he squats, he, he moves in. So the, the, the combat vet has got really good tactics. He's really over tactics, over qualified and he has actual experience which the other cop doesn't have so the cop has a lot of things working against him okay so I'm not sure if the, the suspect is reloading or if he had a jam but um, the officer was shot, I think, six times. And the last shot got him in the eye that killed him when the guy comes back. But uh, he, he shot the suspect once in the stomach. And again, we're talking about handgun versus rifle. Remember, a rifle, offensive. Handgun, defensive. Rifle, much more velocity. Usually heavier rounds. Usually faster rounds. Handguns, not so fast. Not so heavy. Not a long barrel. Not as accurate. So we got a rifle against a pistol. We got a combat vet with experience against a non or, or, or non experienced guy. We got a 22 year old guy against a 50 year old guy. Uh, a lot of things working against his officer, and he loses. So the suspect yelled, die fucker, right before he left. That kind of hurt his appeal process when they tried to get him. Uh, evidently, nobody had a bunch of sympathy for him because he yelled, die fucker, when he shot the guy and he hit him in the eye, and the cop ends up dying on the side of the road. But uh, you could hear the cop breathing, out of breath, tunnel vision, just total in panic mode. I talk about the color zones. You know, don't be in your white zone. Don't be in your relaxed zone. Be in your yellow, orange, ready to react. But I think the cop went into black panic here, and he shouldn't have went to his black zone because he wasn't prepared. He didn't have a plan. And he, he, he just wasn't expecting this. And when you don't expect things and you run around in what, what I call la-la land thinking everybody's nice, that's how you set yourself up to fail and you're not ready when shit goes really bad. And you're shocked. And you can't believe what's happening. Instead of saying, you know what? Not only do I believe it's happening, I know it could happen. I expected this to happen because I always know people is capable of this, and now I'm ready to respond to it, and I'm in a fight, and I have to survive. So, uh, suspect jumps in the car, peels off, takes off. They catch him the next day, uh, sleeping in a sleeping bag underneath the camouflage uh, little cover thing. I think he was shot in the belly. Uh, he apologized before they put him to sleep. They killed him with lethal ejection. He apologized to family and said, you know what? My slow death of 15 years have been misery, and I'm ready to leave. So he didn't really care that he was going to die. He was actually wanting it and hoping for it. Hard to fight people like that. All right, we'll end that there.